And something that we haven't done for a while, we're going to actually go through some tech news. All right. We've had a lot of great guests, of course, the, the last few months, and we haven't had a chance to really get caught up on news. So, Jim, you and I are going to actually hash out some things today. Yeah, how'd it go, how'd it go last week? You took some time off. I did. Uh, and I want to say congratulations to my daughter yeah. and son-in-law, of course. We have a brand new baby girl. Oh, you're a granddaddy. I'm a granddaddy. Again. So, yes, yeah, pretty exciting. Of well, course. kudos to you, sir. Well, thanks. Thanks. We're getting old, Marlo. I know We're it. We're getting old. Grandchildren everywhere, I tell We're you. We're all going to be geezers. <laughs> He's got a little bit of a head start on the rest of us. I, I would say he's got a lot of a head start on the rest of us. <laughs> of course, that is producer extraordinaire Jim Walsh. So. I resemble that remark. <laughs> Thanks, Geez. So, yeah, that uh, that kind of creeped up real quick last week. Yeah. Uh, I think my daughter called me about like 18 after 10 and said, Dad, I think I'm having a baby today. And I'm okay. like, whoa. Whoa. So hurried up and got up to Minot. Uh, so he called old Sheriff Nick. Uh, yep, Sheriff in. Nick and and uh, his sidekick Doug and his comical sidekick in. Doug. Yeah, <laughs> they came in and did an. Ex- well, excellent I kept calling job Greg for some weird reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I was a, having a blonde moment. There's a couple Gregs in our lives too. I think so. Monday. Anyway, then, yeah, uh, yeah un- unbelievable weekend weather wise. Yeah. Now it's going to turn back to something more wintry here. Yes. As of right now, as a matter of fact, it's well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's not that cold yet, no, but it's going to get there. Yeah, but today, of course, uh, we're going to get hit by winter weathery conditions. I think to the north of us, just just to the north of us, blizzard warning. And uh, here, and as I was coming into the studio, the winds were really starting to pick up. Have you ever noticed? And I don't want to jinx it. But have you ever noticed we seem to be in that little pocket that tends to miss a lot of the worst of it, either skirts to the north of us or to the south of us? Yes. Should I knock on wood now? Yeah, that's all knock on wood. (laughs) Although you could state that in December we were the unlucky uh, people because to the to the east of us but I'm, I'm almost thinking it's like we got the worst of it over early it, it, on we really did actually although yeah. as we all know you know the worst of winter can come right at the very end right now yeah. remember a couple of years ago first weekend of may yep yeah we oh, got pounded man. it happens sometimes there's no doubt about it snow happens no doubt about no doubt about it so be safe out there everybody yes. if you're in north dakota and south dakota and montana I uh, really need to pay attention to the changing weather today. Prepare to dress for wintry weather. Yes, make sure that you have, if you're traveling, make sure you at least have your, yeah, dress well. Oh, yeah. And make sure that you have your smart devices with you. Mm-hmm. And maybe carry an extra battery with you for your smart devices. And Grab that ice scraper out of the uh, trunk again. Yeah, you may Talk need to have that tech. too. <laughs> yeah, that, that, well, you know. Um, but yeah, I, the apps, that's a good point. You should have an app or two. You should have your... You should have a, a battery backup with you in case you get stranded someplace. So that because right. the one thing nowadays, of course, is that with GPS built into our phones, yeah, even if everything else goes haywire, you can at least still communicate with people, and at the very least, they can track you via the GPS on your That's phone. That's right. You know, so if you were in a some type of accident or something, and in the middle of a blizzard. The emergency, you know, officials out there can actually track you down, which is absolutely amazing. Now, does that work on the interstate if you're like a half a mile walk from the nearest mile marker and you don't want to get out and look at it? You right. Can just, uh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You could do that. You know, if you have some GPS oh, apps on your phone. Uh, in fact, NDSU has a an app, and I, for the last, I just can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but it is an app for traveling in bad weather, and yeah. it actually tells you or suggests to you the different types of things that you should have packed in your car what you yeah. know for food items and for for uh, maybe an extra blanket and some candles and that type of thing it, it goes through this emergency emergency survival kit that's what it's called okay and uh that's and then the it name has, of the app that's the name of okay. the app and it's put out by ndsu in fargo north dakota mm-hmm. so that's a pretty cool uh place for this app to come from a place where they're quite familiar with Lousy Very familiar, weather. yep. And then, of course, it has ways that you can. Uh, it has that GPS tracking built into it, and uh, you know ways that you can contact people. So it's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I'd probably suggest maybe if you're going to travel today to get the Winter Survival Kit app right. put on your phone. So, yeah, uh, Wendy's. You know, we were talking a few weeks ago about how McDonald's was was uh, starting to play around with these self ordering kiosks. Yeah, that they're putting in, and, you know, as a way to combat the. Well, there's there's two things that are going on with this. You know, first of all, there are some states now that are toying, and and the federal government are toying with with upping the minimum wage substantially. Oh, they've been talking about that for a few years right. now. 
So as a result, fast food companies are, are like, there's no way we can pay these type of wages and keep our prices low like they are. So, you know, they've been looking at technology to, to offset that a little bit. So yeah. these self-ordering kiosks have kind of come into play a little bit. Uh, the second part of this, though, is that, you know, we're getting more and more technologies. People just don't want to wait anymore. You know, I, I, oh, I know, yeah. you know, we, we have, a, as I've stated for the last 20 years, we live in a fast food society now. I mean, you, you know, 30, 40 years ago, we waited for food. Yeah. It was a big deal to prep for a, a lunch or a dinner. Mm-hmm. I mean, a big deal. Nowadays we go out and we get a burger in three minutes and Mom that's and grandma spend all day in the kitchen? All day in the kitchen. Not just on Thanksgiving. We're talking uh, it was on a, a regular basis. It was a daily thing. Yeah. It really was. So, you know, but the millennials uh, of our of our world are just really tired of standing in line all the time. And yeah, I yeah. get that. I'm an impatient person, too. Um, so these self, self-ordering kiosks actually speed up that ordering process. You don't have to stand in line. Kind of like when you go to a superstore now. Do you, do you go through the self-checkout or do you go through a checkout that's got a person in you it? You mean like at the Walmart? Yep. Uh, we generally, we do the self-checkout. And why is that? Well, for one thing, it's a lot less of a wait. That's exactly my point. You get through there a lot faster. Yeah. yeah. And it just, it just, yeah, I agree with you. And I mean, even though it's a little bit more work on your part, you're willing to do the extra work because you don't have to wait as long. That's right. right. Yeah. So the same thing is true here. So anyway, Wendy's is coming out. They're going to put it in a thousand restaurants this year. Yeah. A thousand restaurants are going to have these self-ordering kiosks. So this will be, this will be an interesting trend as we move forward, I think. Now, this is not brand new. I've seen delicatessens that do the same oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, There's I don't think it's... one of my hometown, not here, but in my hometown on the East Coast, where you walk in and you uh, enter the thing for a sandwich. Now, there is a guy, obviously, behind the counter to prepare the sandwich. Right, right. But if they get really busy, they'll just tell you, just, you know, enter your thing there. Right. And then it'll come up in order. I just don't think it's been deployed on such a large scale before no. this. It's just been kind of yeah. a spattering of... McDonald's is uh, a national chain. This right. place I'm talking about is a mom-and-pop operation. Right, right. Well, it's course. it's a locally uh, franchised, right. regional franchise. Thing. Right. So so I think as we move forward, you're going to see more and more of this type of thing. Yeah. And, and I'm sure not in just uh, uh, fast food restaurants, you're going to see it all over the place. So And speaking of that, so... Um, so when you go out to dinner, and I'm sure you've had this before. In fact, I've seen yours and your wife's rant about a local eatery here. Yeah, we're not going to mention days. the name, yeah. but uh, we had a little problem with it. And it's a place we go a lot. Sure. And we love their food. The food was great. The waitress was fantastic. But the uh, the manager, the guy they had on duty as the uh, floor manager was uh, kind of a butthead. Right, right. But we're, we're going to resolve that. Yeah. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear yeah. that. So, but one of the, I think one of the things, and and I've and I'm sure you've run into this a lot too. You're done with your meal, yeah. and then, then you're kind of waiting for the tab to show up, right? Mm-hmm. So you can pay your bill, and you're just sure. like, you know, and they're busy, and, and you get that, and you're like, you know, it's ten, fifteen minutes, and you're, you're thinking there's a line of people there that want people to sit on your table, but yet they're not even getting me the bill fast enough so I can get out of here. Yeah, well, you got to right. wait for them to drop the hatchet, and right. then you uh, take your cart out and you leave it there. You got to wait for the girl to come pick it up. And then wait another ten minutes for her to bring it back. That's and exactly right. So there you go. So Mastercard's coming out with an app called Quicker, uh, Q K R. Okay, Q K R, and you can open up a tab at, at participating bars and restaurants. And when you're done, you just leave. You don't have to I wait like to. It. You just the the app just takes takes care of it for I you. I think so. Applebee's is already doing that. They might they be. Might be. Might be. So all right, everybody, after the break, we'll continue our conversation yeah. about the latest in news and technology. Come on back. Right now, thirty-seven. News headlines and weather together live on Super Talk twelve seventy. Follow the Guru of Geek at Facebook.com backslash the Tech Ranch or Twitter at Guru of Geek or the Tech Ranch.com. Here again is your Guru of Geek, Marlo Anderson. I'm going to thank all the people who follow us on the Blueberry Network. We're also on the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. We're on Tuned In. We're on the Roku. We're on iTunes, Apple TV, and of course our own app, Radio Pup. Yep. All kinds of places that you can catch the Tech Ranch either live or a little bit later. And, of course, uh, Jim's always great at getting up the show, getting the show up a couple days usually after mm-hmm. the broadcast. So if you want to hop on over to Super Talk and catch it there, too, you can Super always Talk do that. SuperTalk1270.com. Yeah, absolutely. So talking a little bit about tech news. We haven't had a chance to, to actually catch up on a lot of tech news. 
Of course, in January we were at CES, so we were covering a lot of that. Uh, all of all of February, we had some great guests on, and uh, we have a whole slate of new great guests coming pretty shortly here. Yeah. We're also going to be broadcasting from the Lewis and Clark Elementary School in a couple weeks. We're going to be in the third grade classroom oh. for the whole show, so that is going to be very very interesting. Uh, I'm going to actually Jim and I are probably going to I'll have I'm going to uh, get your help here, Jim, on this, but we we need to put together a slate of questions to ask the kids kind of like a homework assignment, and they're going to come back and report on these different types of technology. So that should be a lot of fun to yeah. have their take on this. So um, PayPal is in the news, as usual. They now have 200 million active users, uh, basically a bank with 200 million active users. That's an amazing uh, accomplishment. I know PayPal has been around for a long time. I've been a longtime user of PayPal, have loved for the most part, love the experience of PayPal. Uh, Jim, are you are you a PayPal user? I have an account, but I've never used it. Okay, I, I'll use it eventually. Okay, I'm so sure. you you got it just so that you have it. I when got you it need way it. back in the day. Gotcha. I think there was like one thing I had to order, and I had to use PayPal. Okay, 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 good. Yeah, I know. Uh, I I don't know. Wow, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many transactions a day I do on PayPal. I mean, we do we do a lot of business online, and, and it's probably, in my opinion, one of the most secure ways to order things. And it's yes. the quickest way because if they use, uh, you know, if the company you're ordering stuff from uses like a PayPal Express, of course, if you got Amazon, Amazon does the same type of thing. You just yeah. sign in, and then it just you already have everything set up, and it's just a matter of a pushing a couple buttons and you're ready to go. So you don't have to enter all your information all the time. That's the big thing to me is that right. it's just click and go type of deal. So, But PayPal, 200 million active um, users right now. Uh, a lot of people are opting to use its one-touch system, which is what I was just talking about, so you don't have to keep typing in everything. Um, well, a lot of people use that. Verizon, you, know, you pay your monthly bill. Yes. Yeah, they just say, if you want to pay the uh, card ending in, and they give you a little number at the end, and you punch yes, and you're good to go. And in fact, uh, this is AT&T does kind of the same thing. Yeah. And I, I guess I will say, you know, I get this reminder when it's past due. Like right. the day it's past due, it comes out and it says, do you want to, you know, I, I wish they would do that actually when the bill comes due. Or before it becomes yeah. past due. I mean, I don't. I know. I know they don't charge anything. I think some people do. I. I just. Uh, some of them do. I love the convenience of that. So yeah. I actually wait for the reminder to come, and I just push one and send, and bang, it's done. Some you know? companies will text you beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. I maybe there's a setting and there. They'll I say can it's set up. due tomorrow. Or right. Whatever. See, and if I had that, you know, mine comes when it's like the day after it's due, right? Which still isn't that big a deal. Yeah. I, I just love the convenience of just pushing one and done. You know, yeah. that's just fantastic to me. So, um, Talk Talk, are you familiar with Talk Talk? I've heard of it. So it's a it's a, a VoIP company, a voice over internet protocol. So it's a telephone company, mm -hmm. basically, and uh, they're big in Europe, UK area, and they have been targeted by an industrial scale fraud network out of India. Okay. So they basically, uh, a couple of people have walked out of this network and have stated that this is going on, which is why they basically have found out about it. But uh, Now it's a network that investigates fraud? No, it's it's act the network is actually the fraud. Oh. A network of, of teams of people calling, stating that they're talk talk, you yeah. know, and uh, you either have a problem with your account or whatever. And in order to verify who you are, we need your bank information or oh, we need this right. information. Oh, well, you whatever, never give right? that out over the phone. You don't. For any reason. But the thing is, is that TalkTalk Talk has never, you know, a lot of people trust this. And there's been a lot of people mm -hmm. that have given their bank account stuff over there. So, And the only reason I'm bringing that up is exactly why you're talking about that um, or what, why you brought that up uh, with never giving that information out. If you do not start the phone conversation ever. Yeah. I mean, if you, if, if somebody calls and says they're with MasterCard, if they're with um, Microsoft or Apple mm -hmm. or whoever it is and all, and before that they can move forward, uh, they'll always state, you know, in order to verify that I'm talking to the right person, can you verify this information for me? And then, and you know, we need your social security number. We need this, we need that. Right. I'm sorry, but uh, if you're already calling me, you should have that information, uh -huh. right? 
Yeah. I mean, that's the way I look at it. So well, when I did uh, customer service for one of those companies, yeah. yeah, we had all the information right there on the screen. Right. That's exactly right. And I understand some type of verification process, but not the whole thing, you know. Yeah. And I and I'm sorry, but if they're the ones that are calling me, I don't even give out any information anymore. I'd say ninety percent of the calls that we get are illegitimate. Mm-hmm. And it might even be higher percentage than that yeah. with these things. It's a sad time in our world when you can't even trust a, a, a company yeah. to call you, you know, a company that you do business with to call you to to uh, do business with you over the phone, maybe even just just because you have an appointment with your doctor or whatever. I don't trust anything on the phone anymore. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. That's just crazy. If, if it's somebody other than maybe you or my family or friends yeah. calling, I, I just don't trust it. Well, I'm the same way. I have a list of people. I have what they call a white list. Uh, some people call it a whitelist. Okay. Yep. And it's specifically the people that you will allow to get through. Right. And uh, if you're not on the whitelist, I'll just let it pick up, and then I'll decide later if I want to call you back. And it's really sad that we have come to that part because, yeah. you know, you could have some type of emergency going on. Yeah. I mean, there could be, and you just don't know who you trust anymore. But yeah. you, you really, especially if they're starting to ask for verification of who you are, don't trust it. Well, like you Simple said, if it's that. not immediate friends or family, if it's not my wife or my brother, you know, calling to report on my father's health issues uh, or, uh, you know, a certain family member, like I have a cousin I talk to periodically about that stuff. Yep. Uh, if it's not one of those people, you know, if I don't recognize, basically the rule of thumb is if I don't recognize the number, I let it pick up. Right. But, you know, you can have things, you know, we had a, a, a person posing as a police officer a few years back. I heard about that. Yeah. And uh, had called and said that our daughter had been kidnapped Ugh. and wanted to verify who, I mean, after, and, and gave some vague, a vague description of her. But it was enough that we were like, oh, my goodness, this could be her. Yeah. So, of course, you have this fear and they're like, well, we have to verify who you are. And kind of a red flag goes up right away. And then I started asking a few questions. But I was very, it was very unsettling, extremely unsettling. Right. Um, and they, they kind of prey on that a little bit, yeah. you know, that they're going to put some type of fear factor in you or whatever it is. So, um, and you got to be diligent because sometimes you be. if you're in the middle of something and you're all caught up in your work or you're, you're, you're behind on something, you're dealing with a crisis, and the phone rings and it's one of those people. Yes. You know, there are times I've caught myself where you're almost inclined to just take what they're offering just to get them off the phone. Right. But you can't do that. Yep. Yeah, you really have to be diligent. So yeah. Absolutely agree with you. So um, some great news in, in our local community, uh, yeah. the bismarck Mandan area, you know, both Uber. Well, not everybody would say it's great news, but we're going to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we that. are. We're going to get right into yes. that. So, But Uber and, and Lyft. Lyft and Uber in that order, yeah. but yeah. Have, have come into our community. First question everybody asks uh, that I've talked to locally is, what's the difference between the two services? So basically, I mean, they both operate or about the same. Or is it like Coke same. and Pepsi? Yeah, I would say that's a great analogy. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually personally prefer Lyft. And the reason for that okay. is I have found, and I have nothing against Uber. You yeah. know, I mean, I've had great experiences with both companies. Uh, but I'm one that, that likes to reward people for service. So Lyft has a built-in uh, way to tip their people. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't tip Uber drivers. I guess you can just give them cash afterwards if you yeah. want to do that or whatever. But, you know, more. I mean, there are a lot of times I don't have a lot of cash on me anymore, so it's difficult to tip them. I hardly you know? ever have cash right. on me. Yeah. Right. So I think it really – and I, I have found, I guess, when I've used Lyft in, in other cities – uh, it's not uncommon for them to have bottles of juice and water in the back yeah. while you're riding along, and and they're they're extremely helpful. They want to make sure that you get the utmost customer service because they know that if they do this thing well, they're going to get rewarded. They afterwards. got XM uh, Sirius in the car, which they shouldn't have. They yeah. should have us. But uh, <laughs> uh, the point is, they've got you get your choice of music in, right. in, when you're yeah. in the car. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's fantastic. So uh, I, I really like that service and and i like yeah. the fact that within a couple minutes usually you can have somebody to pick you up and there are so many advantages to this you know in in our area you know we've had you know um our taxi service has been great they've done the they've done actually i think a pretty good job over the years but 
we live in a we're in an area we're basically rural i mean we what do we have uh in our metro maybe a hundred thousand people yeah i mean we're barely large enough and, and this is not meant as a joke or a put down but we're barely large enough to really be a real city right i agree with that so um, and I mean, you get outside of Bismarck Mandan. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we have a bunch of suburbs that continue to roll along. No, or whatever. no, I mean, no it's just sprawling, no urban sprawl no, around I mean, here. You're, well, maybe a little bit to the north of town, but nothing but like not much. Nothing like the bigger towns. Right. I mean, you when you're in the city limits, you're in the country here. I mean, that's just how it. I is. mean, I come from the Philadelphia area. You talk about urban sprawl. Yeah. Whoa. Just goes on. You can and drive on and miles on. and miles and miles before you see any open country. Right. Right. So I think that really lends the fact that, uh, you know, having companies like Lyft and Uber here are are uh, actually kind of exceptional to have yes. them here, you know. Uh, and, and people who are unable to get around, you know, if, if you're uh, disabled in any way, if you're elderly, if you're young. I mean, maybe, maybe you're 16 and don't have a driver's license. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of opportunity with Lyft. Um, that you wouldn't have with a regular taxi service. So I, I, I love the fact that they're here, and I hope they make it. So I really do. So after the break, we, everybody, we will continue this conversation on Tech News. So come on back. Right now, 37. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. We're back to the Tech Ranch. Stream this program now at Supertalk1270.com. Here is your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. So, Jim, Uber, you know, we were just talking about Lyft and Uber yeah. and how exciting it is that they're finally in our local community here. Right. I know many people who listen to the show are like, what are you guys talking about? We've had them for years. But, you know, where we live at, it's a big deal. It is. Because we live in a relatively rural area. So, uh, but Uber has been having uh, some issues. They're having a backlash. They, they are having there a There are some a- people out there who really don't like them and what they're doing. And uh, I, I, I'm I, curious about that. What have they done that has gotten them in the um, in hot water with uh, so many people? Well, I think there was, there was an instance just a few weeks ago where the CEO of Uber actually came down on uh, one of their drivers. Uh, right. I think it I was over a tip issue, if I remember yeah. right, and uh, was caught on on uh, tape, basically, or yeah. on social media, verbally abusing this this person, dropping f bombs and all kinds of stuff to this person. Mm. So it was not not a pretty scenario. And yeah. Then, then this this little report comes out a couple days ago um, that Uber's been using a secret software called Grayball. G R E Y. Now this to me is fascinating. It's pretty let's, cool. Let's... Well, it's it's cool if you're a software company thinking, how can I beat these guys at their own game? Right. But it's it's kind of disturbing at the same time. Now right? we know what a black ball is. Right. Uh, uh, and so it's already kind of self-explanatory. But go but ahead great. and tell yeah. the story so, anyway. Yeah, that's interesting that you make that analogy, right? I never thought yeah. of that till just now. Yeah, called gray ball. So yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, Uber's, you know, frequently been at odds with governments, uh, with with competitors, yeah. and with with probably and competitors, and I wouldn't say probably like Lyft and other ride sharing services, more so taxi services, where they've really had some issues with unions and that type of thing in, yeah. in larger communities, right? So there was, you know, some orchestrated efforts to to maybe do some things to Uber, you know, maybe maybe do you know take a ride and then don't give the the driver proper credit and and, right. and do all this kind of stuff. So so Uber come out with this software called Grayball, which is basically a fake Uber app. And oh. they they would identify you as a person that maybe they don't want to do business with. And they would allow you to have they, and somehow or another they would track you and You'd go on to Uber to book a ride, and basically everything looks the same. Looks like there are people around you to to uh, pick you up and take yeah. you where you want to go, but nobody ever accepted your ask for a ride. In essence, they're telling everybody this guy is a butthead. Don't pick him up. Right, exactly. So, and then they 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 took that a little bit farther, mm-hmm. and they started adding maybe government officials and. Like you know, the kind local. of politicians who were speaking out against them. Exactly right, yeah. Oh. Um, so, And this just came to light, light the last few days. So it'll be interesting to see if, you know, I, I don't even know if it's against the law because, you know, a company does have, generally has the right to refuse service to whoever they want to. Yeah. 
So, you know, legally... Well, there, have been, there have been tort cases. I mean, people have been sued for that kind of thing, I know. That is true. Uh, where it stands in the legal system, I mean, what the precedent is, I don't know. You know, there was the uh, the issue, uh, and, and, you know, generally that is the case, but, you know, as I'm thinking about that now, wasn't there an issue a couple of years ago in California where there was a gay rights issue about mm. uh, a company that didn't want to make a cake for somebody? Right. And, you know, eventually I think they lost that case. Well, there have so, been cases as recently as the last few years in uh, New York, for example, with the cab companies. Uh, there have been uh, people of color as we say, uh, accusing the cabbies of passing them over okay, um, because they were black or whatever. Sure, sure. And it's hard to imagine that kind of thing happening in this day and age, yes. but apparently it does. Yeah. So this will be interesting how this plays out. You yeah. know? And so we'll see how that goes. But Uber's been under attack a little bit lately. A lot of it's probably self-imposed. You know, the CEO issue, uh, not not a great thing. And this this issue with, with this extra software or this special software called Grayball, um, it'll just be interesting to see how that plays out. I, I don't have one opinion one way or the other on it right well, now. Well, the article I, I saw over the weekend, and uh, consider the source on these things too, but uh, they were saying that the guy apparently is a really go maniac. He sees himself as some kind of great uh, visionary capitalist sure. who's changing the world, blah, 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 yep. blah, 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 yep. and like something out of the fountainhead or whatever. Uh, and obviously that doesn't sit well with a lot of people of certain political persuasions. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So very, very interesting. Nintendo, uh, over the weekend, their new game system just came out called uh, Switch. Have you seen this? Switch. Yes. Okay. So, I'm not a game person. Never have been. You know, I, I was earlier on, and I had to step away from it because I, I like most things in my life, I, I, I'm i 150% in, in it when yeah. I'm doing it, you know, so... Uh, one morning my wife <laughs> came in and said, Hey, are you getting ready for work? And I had realized that I had played the game of Warcraft the entire night. Oh. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I just figured it was 10 or 11 at night here. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I've come close to, to doing that with this thing right here, this yep. iPhone. Yep. So yeah, it's very, you can get engrossed. So I had to step yeah. away from that a little bit. That's, that's a few years ago already, but, but Nintendo has this new game called Switch. Or a new place or a station called Switch. And basically how it works is that the console hooks up to your television, like most of them do, right? Yeah. And when you if you need to leave, the handheld version is part of the regular console. So you can be playing a particular game and you can just take it with you. Mm-hmm. And then it's got a screen and everything built into it. So it's uh uh it's a mobile PlayStation and it's a full deck to play the game, you know, on your big screen TV if you mm-hmm. want to. So it's actually pretty ingenious that they're all – so you don't have to buy separate games for your mobile gaming system and your home gaming system. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty pretty uh, interesting. And it starts at 300 bucks, which isn't – I guess if you're a gamer, isn't I, – I don't think that's a bad price. Yeah. Um, also comes with uh, what they call the Joy-Con controllers. And these are controllers that you use, of course, to play the game. Yeah. Um, and then when when you grab the mobile or you switch to the mobile side, these these game controllers slide in uh, to the mobile device, so that you can take those same controllers yeah. on. So whatever you you know what you're used to playing on the big screen is exactly what you're doing on the small screen, which is yeah. cool too. Um, and what's interesting about these is that they work on Bluetooth, so. People, just in the last couple days, these controllers work on Windows, Mac, and Android devices as well. So, Whoa, Windows so, and Mac yeah, and yeah, Android. Yeah, so you, you could actually Bluetooth them over, and if you're used to using these controllers, all of a sudden you can be navigating uh, your your other devices, your, your computers or whatever, with the same controllers, playing games with them or whatever, so... It's pretty cool. I think that'd be a pretty big deal if you're uh, if you're a gamer. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh, Nintendo Switch, it is out. It's available. Um, you know, it's it's unique, and it, you know, I suppose I think about Wii when it first came out too. Wii, you know, the handheld controller where you could be oh um, yeah. You know, you could do Dance Machine. You could be running through the jungle. You mm-hmm. could do. You could bowl. You know, you could do all these things yeah. with these controllers. You know, so that was pretty unique when that came out too. They're always looking for the the next big deal there, of course. So, um, you know, I actually am probably going to go buy this game machine. So I, I'm I'm 
intrigued enough to do that. So I think mm-hmm. it'll be pretty cool. Um, let's see what else I got on the news here. Supercharging. Supercharging for your phone. So how long does it take for your phone to charge up right now, Jim? About an hour. Really? If that. Uh, well, it depends. I've got. You have a, a full charge in an hour on your phone. Actually, I, I, I take that back. Uh, lately, uh, the new chargers I've got are a bit faster. So you, you're you actually done it in less than an hour? Yes. How old is your phone? Uh, this phone is about a year and a half old. And it's a Samsung. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So I have an HTC. I suppose mine's about two years old. I would say mine takes about two hours or longer to charge. Yeah. So, yeah, this supercharger. Uh, it's well, this called, one is designed for fast charging. I'm amazed at that, Jim. Yeah. I really am. That's pretty cool. I may have to upgrade just for that reason alone. Yeah. But there's a, it's called the Super M Charge, mm-hmm. and uh, it's put out by yeah. um, a company called Meizu, M-E-I-Z-U. And they claim that this this particular, in combination with their battery, right. will charge in under 20 minutes. Now, my pad takes a while to charge. My my pad takes forever to charge. Yeah, my pad takes uh, at least two hours. But I will say that my pad will, I mean, I can go and work all day on the darn thing and yeah. never have to plug it in. So so that's, I, I don't know if it's just because it's got a bigger battery in it. I'm yeah. guessing that's the case, and that's probably why it takes longer to charge. I mean, this assuming you let it go all the way down to right. like a single digit Right, uh, right. So, so they usually last a bit longer. But, but be looking for this, uh, MyZoo's Supercharge. Um, I don't know if they're just going to be integrated into new phones when they're, when they're coming out or if it's an add-on that you'll be able to do right. in the near future. But you can certainly take a look at that. So, um, yeah, and we have all kinds of news on Alexa and Google Home. Mm. So this is uh, probably the the biggest thing to me. Well, there's all kinds of biggest things. I guess we're coming up on the break, so I'll, I'll yeah. take care of the small one first. Sure, so, sure. Multi-user. So, you know, we've had Alexa in here before. We've interviewed her a few times. Oh, right? yeah. She's and adorable. She is adorable, you know, in that nice slick black dress she wears. And I'm just kidding, everybody. Yeah. But uh, uh, a wonderful device. And, and I haven't used the Google Home device yet, so I need to to uh, do that one of these days. So although we're going to be using Google Assistant shortly, so you can hear that. Um, but they're talking about multi-user and voice recognition. So, Jim, you could talk to Alexa in with your account, okay, and I could talk to Alexa on my account on the same machine. Whoa! So, if you have things that are set to yours or whatever, um, and and mine has, you know, so you could add stuff to your calendar, and it would know that you personally are talking to her. Yeah. And when if I were to come back and say, Alexa, add to my calendar, you know, the Tech Ranch Mondays at eleven. She would take care of that and add that to my calendar. Mm-hmm. So the voice recognition thing, I think, is going to be very, very cool in the future. All right, everybody. We will continue our discussion on Amazon Alexa and Google. And uh, we're actually going to take a little sample of the new Google Assistant. So you want to hear that. Yeah. Right now, 37. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Follow the guru of geek everywhere he goes. Post your comments or questions at thetechranch.com. Once again, your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. So we were playing with Google Assistant over the break here. We were Googling. Yes, and uh, so Google has just updated their Google Assistant as right. of just a couple days ago. So let's give it a try. Okay, okay Google. What's the weather forecast for tomorrow? Tomorrow's forecast for Mandan, North Dakota, is 30 degrees and cloudy. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, Google. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A woodchuck could chuck as much wood as a woodchuck would chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. (laughs) Oh, that's good. I'm impressed with how fast this is. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, Google. How far is it to mine at North Dakota from our current location? The drive from your location to Minot is 113.2 miles. Minot is giving us the French pronunciation yes, yes, there. Yes, it always does that in all these. So. Minot. Well, the first time I ever saw it, I thought, oh, it's got to be a French pronunciation. Right, right. Yeah. And, and you know, I get that. It because, looked, Fran- looked like a French word. Well, and Delac is right there. Yeah. And, you know, they're, and that's the same thing, you know. You, you think like Fond du Lac, Wisconsin or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So I, I get that. But, yeah, it's uh, Google Assistant. 
and it has been updated to hundreds of millions of devices on March 2nd. Ooh. So, and you have to activate it by, by saying, OK, Google, three times. Like Beetlejuice. Like Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> Won't work on the second one, but if you say it the third time. OK. Oh, what's so funny about this, Jim? Say Beetlejuice is named three times he appears, but the number three is used multiple times in the film. Aside from Beetlejuice's <laughs> What's so okay. funny about that is we activated that and then, uh, okay, Google went and actually, yeah. i got to turn it off here now. That's pretty funny that we activated yeah. it for Beetlejuice. Uh, so, yeah, I would, uh, if you have if you have an Android phone, uh, I would certainly go into my Google settings. And, Jim, you were just doing that on the break yeah, there. Yeah, going, going to Google and. Googling around with it. And and uh, just activate uh, Google Assistant, and and you'll yeah. have. I think it's every bit as good as Siri. Good, you know, with the exception that I don't think Google Assistant has the personality. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that might that might come along as the app gets you know. Does little, it play music? It plays music. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just like you know, uh, all you have to do is just just tell it, and it'll play the tunes that you want. Or yeah. Whatever. So it's pretty cool too. Uh, it does, you know, it, it's basically an advanced search feature. Uh, I was playing, uh, you can make phone calls with it. Right. You can text with it. You know, so those are probably the big things that I'm going to use it for. I've I've never really been a fan of text-to-speech. I've got some, some horror stories about uh, how bad that has been for me in the past, and I'm not going to get into those now because I'll embarrass myself all over again. But it uh, um, this seems to be pretty good, so I'm going to probably use that when I'm driving uh, and it'll read the text back to you as well. Yeah. So you can you can text people and and uh, without having to look at your device, you can just say "Okay, Google," and away it goes. Yeah. So I think I that's it. pretty cool. Uh, Amazon Alexa, like we were talking about, has uh, some updates coming as well. Amazon plans to release new Alexa devices that can make phone calls and work as intercoms. Okay. So. We've had uh, a good friend of mine, Charlie Francis, over in the Castleton, North Dakota area. We, he's, uh, you think I'm geeky? <laughs> I, Charlie is like me times ten. So he works for. Oh, uh, I've, I've uh, met people who are like oh, geekier than you. Oh are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, you can function. <laughs> Well, Charlie can function too. You, you, you know. have a you have a driver's license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right <laughs> you about job. that. And I don't live downstairs in my mom's That's house. Right. You know, so. Uh, but yeah, it. Uh, we've we've talked about this a lot. Why you can't use Alexa as like an intercom system? Well, they're coming out with this now. Okay. And I think this is going to be cool. I mean, the ability to just say Alexa, you know, call Jim, and all of a sudden you and I are just talking through our Alexa devices. Oh, okay. You know, as opposed to our, you know, having a phone, and you know, sometimes of course you need to have a private conversation, but a lot of times it's just yeah. we just want to call and talk to each other sure. or whatever, you know, uh, and not have to use some app on the phone or or on our, our computer or whatever. I just think that this is pretty cool, and I I can see, and even in the house, you know, you're downstairs, your wife is upstairs or whatever, instead of hollering through the house, you can just just use the intercom based yeah. in, in Alexa because. We, you know, in our house anyway, we have a few of them around the house. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. And the ability to make phone calls, that'll be interesting as well. Um, you know, the ability to just say, hey, Alexa, call Jim. And if you're not if you're not on your Alexa at your house to call you on your phone, I think that's pretty cool too. Yeah. So I, I you know, I just... I'm impressed more and more and more with these devices. You know, of course, the scary side is they're always listening to you. Yeah, Big Brother is listening. It, there's no doubt, yeah. no doubt about that. But the convenience of having these devices, mm. and you know, for you and I is great. Um, I think about of all the devices, my mom will never have a computer. She will never have a computer in in her lifetime. You know, but I could see her using this. Okay. Because if you can just talk to a device and it will read you a story or, yeah. or play music or tell you what the weather's going to be like today or tomorrow or how far, you know, what the road conditions are going to Mino or whatever Mino. it is, Mino. No, uh, <laughs> Les Dakota de Nil, Norte. I, I just, you know, there are a lot of people that I think would, would utilize it that aren't very comfortable with operating a regular computer. Yeah. So I, I do. I, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. But. Yeah, I, I, I'm all in favor of anything that uh, means less work for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, and you, you think, think I'm of, making a joke? Well, no, I'm not. I, not. I, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. And and I think about uh, you know, not that long ago, you and I. I mean, our source of information was encyclopedias. Yeah. It wasn't that long. You ago. actually had to get up, walk across the the room, and get a pull a book out of the shelf. And, and it was ho- barbaric. And hopefully, the information was somewhat accurate. You know, because by the time that they researched it and put it in a, a set of books, and you had yeah. it on your shelf for three years, yeah. You know, nowadays, of course, at the touch of our finger or now our voice, we can just ask for this. Information but of course, at some point, it. the novelty will wear off, and we'll be complaining because it's not fast enough. That's correct. That's human correct. nature just like, uh, uh, louis ck the comedian he talked oh, yeah. about that about you know you're standing there uh, trying to get your computer or your iphone to do something and it won't do it and you're going oh, a piece of junk or other words exactly and he said, right. wait a minute you've got this thing in your hand that's a more complicated computer than what they use to send us to the moon and you're complaining because it takes you an extra picosecond right <laughs> to get the current temperature and at least you know you and i at least have a, a, a a frame of reference as, as to what this was like oh, before yeah. we had this technology. There are plenty of people 30 years of age and under that have mm-hmm. no clue what no life clue. was like without smart devices. Well, just like we were the first generation not to know a world without television. That's true. Our kids and grandkids, uh, they all this, this is all stuff that they will take for granted Yep. from day one. Yep, that's true. That is very true. Uh, YouTube launched its own streaming TV service. Did you see this? I heard about it. So well, they've been talking about that for years. They have, but they now have it, uh, 35 bucks a month. And I mean, like with their own shows and whatnot. Well, it's actually uh, ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC are on, on this, oh, along okay. with like four, about 45 channels, or roughly 35 yeah. cable channels. So it's like Hulu? Well. No, it's like cable TV. Oh, okay. Except that instead of having cable TV, it comes through your devices. So if you have a Roku or, or um, one of those type of devices. Doesn't yeah. HBO do that already? They do that already. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, and usually HBO, it's a standalone type of thing, so you have to pay extra for that as well. Yeah. But the nice thing is is that it's a la carte. You know, so that I like. Yeah. So you don't have to pay for 150 channels no. or 500 channels that you don't use. You can just order yeah. the channels that you want. That's what I've always liked about the Roku, anyway. Yeah, if I don't want the Pinochle channel or the Pet Ferret channel, right, I, right. I don't have to worry about it. The only downside to having those type of devices, of course, is that you're not getting the live TV streams that are coming yeah. in now with with uh, YouTube launching. But nowadays, its own service. for the most part, people don't care. I don't care. You know, I mean, there's probably. Uh, the one show that I would care about would be 24. I'm a huge 24 fan. Yeah. I don't know if you watch that or not, but but it's kind of funny. You know, it's on Monday nights. So yeah, 15 years ago when that show first aired, we had parties around that show. That's right. And you know, it was an amazing thing. Now, if I don't catch it tonight, I'll catch it later in the week. You know? Yeah, so I mean, deal. the exceptions I think would be things, anything in real time where, like sports. Yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, the Super Bowl. There's a reason that the Super Bowl does extremely well, and why advertisers will spend five five million dollars for thirty second commercials because they know they have the audience now. It's a captive audience. I mean, you're not going to. It's very unlikely. Let's put it that way. Uh, you're going to tape the Super Bowl and watch it a day or two later. Right, because you're already going to know the outcome yeah. of it by that time. Yeah, I well, It's like when we were that. kids, uh, the analogy a friend of mine uses, Holland Cook, he says when we were kids and the Beatles came on Ed Sullivan, it was appointment television. You had to be there in front of the TV, yep. 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock Sunday night, or you didn't get to see the Beatles. Right. Nowadays, it's not like that. It's not. I you don't know. know. So, um, you yeah. can, uh, you know, the TV, the programming accommodates you. And I would say a lot of people probably prefer that. But I, I think there is something about, you know, getting people together to, to you know, watch something in front of the screen or just, yeah. so, just getting together socially for whatever. So Maybe that could mean a return to more live TV, which I think would be great. Uh, which is possible, absolutely. Jim, it's been a great show. Likewise. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Stay safe out there in the weather.